Well, I probably should start by saying if there are any questions, or even if you just want to start by asking me a question, you know, you can do that too. Uh, this is the session at PDF Days where, where I'm going to stop as soon as somebody says something and I'll start answering their question, or at least trying to answer their question. But in the meantime, to keep you distracted or make you think of something else entirely, I'm just going to walk through a few of the features of the PDF Association. And I, I emphasize a few because it's actually really not comprehensive. So I'm going to try and touch on the mission, the members, the organization, resources, and you know, a lot of different qualities or aspects of the PDF Association uh, just to try and uh, provide some context for this event here and for the and, uh, and to give you a sense of what the resources on our website might, might be all about. <clears throat> I'll start with a mission statement uh, that was agreed to in, in about seven years ago by the Board of Directors at that time, uh, pertaining to the promotion of open standards-based electronic document implementations, today I might say digital document, uh, using PDF technology through ex education, expertise, and shared experience for stakeholders worldwide. And, uh, and since that point, we have grown substantially in terms of the numbers of kinds of interests and areas and, and various sectors of PDF utilization that, that we service, uh, simply as a function of the, the members coming to us and saying, you know, uh, it really would be great to, to broaden industry consensus in some given area or another. Or because a government agency has come along and said, uh, this would be very, you know, be very useful to improve our understanding of this or that aspect of PDF technology. After all, for these institutions, they all rely on PDF. PDF is pervasive. So PDF Association members, there are 100 presently, I, it changes uh, monthly. There are 158 active members in 24, 24 countries, uh, com corporations and individuals of, of varying stages of, uh, of, of involvement. Uh, 27 liaison, currently active liaisons with government and nonprofit organizations. And in fact, we're in doing uh, this work increasingly, as, as I'll get to in a moment. The countries could maybe we comment a little bit on this. Yeah. It's, it's mainly Europe and the US, obviously. Okay. Yeah. I'm happy to have, uh, I don't know, take the foreign or Hungary or so. I don't know even whether we have um, member in Hungary or something like that. So that's something senior member in the country. Yep, uh, there are many, many countries are, in fact, and that's reflected in, in what I'm uh, showing to you here, which is the, the sort of fundamental organization of the PDF Association reflects its international character, as Tomas is saying. So the PDF Association EV, that's sort of the mothership, is uh, the German-based organization. It's a part nonprofit. So, uh, this is a, a function of German tax law. Don't get me started. Um, its board of directors, it meets regularly, and that's sort of the governing organization for the complete assembly, the PDF Association EV and the Inc., as I'll refer to in a moment. So it's the EV, the, the, or the, the, uh, the German mothership, that began as the PDF uh, A Competence Center. In fact, Tomas had a lot to do with that uh, back in around 2006 or so. It's, tech, it's presently, it's comprised of technical liaison and other sorts of working groups, and they operate on a variety of objectives uh, as, as are explained on the community page of the pdfa.org. Uh, the PDF Association Inc., on the other hand, was only very recently created in the last couple of years. It's a U.S. Uh, tax entity, a U.S. 501c6, which uh, is a nonprofit uh, organized for the purposes of promoting a business association. Um, so it is the Inc., as we call it internally, the PDF Association Inc., that operates the specifically the ISO uh, standards development arm of the PDF Association. Process it, it handles member payments for, for U.S. members. This is this is all down to like tax optimization, and it sells ISO standards on behalf of the, the uh, on behalf of ANSI and of course on behalf of the community because it gives a modest discount to members. And it has to be modest because we owe most of the the incoming is royalties to ANSI. And so, and probably also rather significant to the sorts of things the PDF Association has been doing recently, uh, increasingly the, the Inc, PDF Association Inc has been functioning as a contracting arm. So we, as I'll, I'll say shortly, we've been doing some work with the US government in one, one particular, uh, particular instance, and also with uh, the, uh, as you may have heard if you were in EA PDF uh, session earlier, with Chris Prom, we've been working on a specification uh, for the EAPDF as well. It's another of our contracts. So at present, the association has sort of. What's the relationship? I mean, is there like a. You mentioned contracts. So does the association EV and the association Inc. have 
some MOU between them? Actually, it's yes. So the Inc. has a single member. It's a 501c6 yeah. with one member, and that one member is the EV. So the EV owns the Inc. I won't proceed until you're satisfied. Or a subsidiary that is, it's not defined as such, and there's a particular reason why it's not. But it's not. It's a reason that that has been that has, that has now passed muster several times, yeah. and we're we're comfortable with it. Um, so we cu currently operate a variety of technical and liaison working groups, and I'll describe that distinction. It's, it's a significant one for us. A technical working group develops actual documents that could become ISO specifications, and it's responsible for an area of interest. So 3D, right, or accessibility, or um, uh, PDF UA development. These are, these are domains. Those are characteristically handled by and technical working groups, there are a variety of, and those are members only. There are also a variety of liaison working groups, and that's area, that's, that's just as, or, or uh, as, as much or more activity there. These are kind of engagement interfaces with other communities. So for example, in the print product metadata liaison working group, there are a bunch of print industry specialists coming together to talk about how best to leverage the, 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 the capabilities of PPM metadata in, in uh, high-speed digital printing contexts, right? But over in the LaTeX project, LWG, they're working on, as, as Frank uh, discussed, Frank Middlebach from, from that project, he's here at, this, at the conference, um, they're working on enhancing LaTeX so it's possible to use LaTeX to natively generate well-tagged and accessible PDF files. Uh, several other, this is another LWG, the PDF accessibility LWG is, is, is developing example uh, of atomic example test files. Uh, Brigid is here, she's working intensively on that project. So there are a number of uh, members and member-based and, and, and other interface communities that are established to make it possible for, the interface communities are there to make it possible for people who only have a specific tangential interest in PDF or only want to contribute to a single type of project to be able to get involved. Uh, so, and here I divided them, rightly or wrongly, between those that tend to have much more regular meetings. So some of these groups, uh, I, uh, EAPDF right now meets every two weeks, but the PDF EUA technical working group meets every week, right? The, uh, the reuse working group meets every week. So there's, there's a variety of, of, of interest levels and, and activity levels in all these different groups across the spectrum. So, this is a major part of the yeah. Which are important for your business, you can benefit a lot from them. Um, but it's really for the technical guys. So I'm too stupid for that. <laughs> Duff, Duff can make it. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to actually characterize it quite that way. It's certainly true that the PDF Technical Working Group is concerns itself greatly, for example, with errata against ISO 32000 Part 2, a, a deeply technical su subject. PDF geeks kind of stuff, right? But over in the Accessibility Liaison Working Group, uh, or, or in particular in the PDF UA Processor Requirements Liaison Working Group, our, our interest is very much in attracting people who are not experts in PDF at all, but have some sort of other specific interest, right? So AT developers, assistive technology developers, we would very much want them to get involved in the Processor Requirements Group. In fact, I'll put out a call to any of them who do that. Um, we do have, so you'll, you'll see here the PDFUA Marketing Working Group is an MWG, says occasional meetings. Mm, it hasn't met in a couple of years, and it's waiting, so it's very occasional, right? But that group is waiting for uh, new leadership. So this is another thing I want to emphasize about our technical and liaison working groups. They are member-driven, right? So we're not going to, we, the staff, we don't have the ability or the, or the resources to be able to actually drive any of these groups. It's instead, and this is consistent with what we do, is we create a platform for industry, industry interested folks from industry to go ahead and say, yeah, you know what? The world could use a, a document, a best practice, a technical note, an application note that describes the right way to do this. And so it's worth investing in creating that content, being recognized for creating that content, having the PDF Association publish it so that the rest of the world can use it too. And if it's good enough and there's enough interest in it, we have a route to getting that published as an ISO standard. Yeah, 
suppose I look at the clients or your marketing guy. I, I knew you were going to say that. Huh? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I would like to see it. Marketing yeah, let, marketing. Uh, let, let's be honest. We have not been so successful. I remember obviously the times where DBFA was hot, so there was really an active marketing working group. Then we had the, uh, also in the board, we had uh, the oh, help me, LA from ITEX and Casually from PDF Tron. So there was a little bit of, but as Staff said, it's member version and also the UA marketing working group is not so active these days. In, in, I would love to see more, but it's member version. It's dependent on the member. Yeah, and, and so, you know, the, the, the f a few of the sort of rules that tend to fall out of, of what we've observed over time is we've been supporting and, and doing what we could and what we imagined to be the right thing to do to help support and sustain the, the industry was, was to, as I say, create this platform. And, and when we noticed that members of the, I'll be straight about it, you know, marketers don't necessarily have, have the experience of collaborating with their competitors on what we should be saying. Right. So one of the sort of key points for us is, and I'll get to this later actually, is that we should probably be thinking as we move forward more about kind of get, not getting in the way between the end user and the vendor and instead providing all kinds of information and services and resources perhaps in other ways. And, 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 and so we'll, we'll, let's talk about that. So from a public resources point of view, um, we, you know, we have a website. Yeah, a lot of people have a website. We publish articles and, and uh, on that website that are sort of strictly educational and, and a, a, a neutral content, uh, factual content uh, or analysis and so on of the, of the marketplace that we occasionally do. We also allow our members uh, to publish content on our site. So many members avail themselves of the opportunity to post their own news about their company, product launch news and so on, and that happens quite often. Um, we have, and then I'll, I'll get into that, but you start basically at pdfa.org and there are other things to see. So the news I just mentioned, uh, you, you, you visit it and you, you have the opportunity to filter it. And, and this is simply, you could say that it's been our ambition anyway to make this like, you could say the newspaper of the, of the PDF industry, such as it is, right? But again, this is largely uh, member driven. So we accept member content. Um, you know, we have a few basic rules that are posted right there in the form, which you'd use to fill it out. And this is just another vehicle for members to begin to communicate with the rest of the world um, using, the, using the platform of the PDF Association. So uh, from, a, from a, the technical point of view, we have a wide variety of resources which are to be found, you know, fundamentally they're, they're organized under the resources menu. There's a technical index and, and other kinds of links here that take you to various types of resources that we post. Now, the case studies and white papers are not our resources. These are, again, another vehicle for members to be able to post their own content. When you log into pdfa.org as a member, and that's done through the member area icon, you can see in the top right corner there. Uh, but once you log into the website, you're able to post not only member news, but also products and services and so on. And, and you can even characterize those products and services in terms of, uh, in terms of, I don't have a slide for it, in terms of their very support for PDF UA or, or PDF 2.0 and so on. So variety of technical resources. Um, now there are, there are some changes coming in this regard and we've got some, we've, 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 some things are you know, more or less on the front burner already. One of them is to improve the accessibility to the video content that we've collected now. Since, yeah, at least, 2011, we, the PDF Association has been recording the sessions that happen at PDF Days events like this and posting them into YouTube playlists. And they're all available from the, from the PDF Association channel at YouTube. However, they're not particularly well indexed. Maybe they're only indexed by the event in which they happened. And so you'd have to look at the titles to figure out what you wanted to look at. So that's not really good enough. And we are, we are in the midst actually of a project of, of developing better metadata and redeploying links and kind of a portal into those YouTube videos from pdfa.org. So the, in addition to sort of providing this form and managing the working groups of the PDF Association, we also manage a number of, we, we deploy and develop a number of publications and, you know, like events, right? So the technical working groups have already talked about that. What do they do? You know, they sit around, they talk about this stuff and that's actually the most important thing because the whole purpose of these things, and it doesn't actually necessarily matter that it comes out in a document, but the really important thing that these things do is it allow 
people to agree on what something means and, and on, on what something should and, and how things should work. So the usual types of products of these eventually come out into ISO standards or other kinds of specification documents. Occasionally, they're application notes or test suites or reference suites in the PDF Association. Over time, has published varieties of, of all these types of documents, including uh, just recently, just the last week, we published two new best practice documents uh, pertaining to variable data printing. And there's one of them is a developer guide, one's a designer guide, and you would find out about that by looking at the news feed on, on pdfa.org. Of course, yeah, as if you're, since you're sitting here, you know that we do this thing called PDF Days events, and so that's, that's, uh, that's something that we do, and it's something that, you know, hopefully you already gotten some value out of, uh, you're still here, so it's the end of two long days. And then another uh, point that uh, is key to mention is the PDF Association provides a vehicle through its category A liaison with the ISO, ISO 171 uh, uh, SC2, uh, that provides a vehicle towards participation in the ISO committees that manage the PDF sp uh, standard. So joining the PDF Association means you can get invited to go participate either you know, uh, on, on, uh, by, by remote or even to, you know, the next meeting is in San Jose in uh, November. So you'd be, you know, if it, uh, they, they, you can get accredited to go to the ISO table as, as a representative from the PDF Association that you can't vote at the ISO table on that basis. You have to do so through your member body. But to be frank, that's more of a technicality. If you have a strong opinion and it makes sense and the rest of the people see it at the table, then uh, the vote is not really the issue. Okay, uh, moving on here. So this is, uh, this is a section of the website and you'd find it under, the, un you'd find it under where it says here, uh, uh, by ISO standards. If you clicked on that, you get to this part of the website and here you could simply this is where, you know, you, I know that you know, you're thinking of this as like a present at the end of the year. Maybe you'll give somebody ISO 30, 32,000 part two. That's 250 bucks. Let's think about it, right? It, discount if you're a PDF Association member. So this is where you will come to buy that. Um, of course, you could go to ISO, you could go to ANSI, you could go to your favorite other standards body, but then you wouldn't be, then the PDF Association would not be getting to retain 35% of the sale, right? So we would much prefer that you buy your ISO standards from PDF from the PDF Association, uh, and, and allow us to continue to contribute to ANSI's uh, royalties. Um, okay, so members, there is a variety of member inf specific information on on the website, and it's to be found no no big surprise underneath the member menu, where by the way we list uh, the members of the PDF Association, and so you know this is a, another of the so to speak services that we offer is the ability for you to to list yourself as a proud member of the PDF technology community. Uh, why does that matter? Well, as, we've, as you've heard me say before, and as you've heard others say here, in the, the story about PDF is the story of interoperability. It's a story of, of, of a deliberate conscious attempt, you know, for successful companies of doing something that other people can understand and process successfully. Uh, there are exceptions to that, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. So in general terms, it's being part of the PDF Association is something to be that, 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 that organizations who are looking to promote themselves as invested in PDF quality and, and high-grade high high PDF functionality, they have, they have, they're drawn to that at some level. So and uh, in addition to having you know, company listings here, these are screenshots, that's why they're not changing. They actually do change when you visit the website. Um, uh, in order, we also allow our members to post their, their, their products and so there is sort of a de facto product index. Uh, it's not complete by any means, but it's there for, for all members who have an interest in it. And a substantial proportion of our members do have an interest in, in, in listing their products and characterizing them uh, using these various uh, criteria, which uh, we allow vis visitors to the site to use for, for sorting purposes. So, yep. My, my tip would be my, uh, my own personal experience. It's important to have your product, your, at least your flagship product. Not, not the, I don't know if you have 20 products, it's too much. And then I, I also fail, I always recommend do it a little bit more timers here. So you have enough to do with the newest features and the newest wonderful functions on your website. And it also happened to me, I forgot this update. <laughs> and then someday I found out, ooh, is this old? So I recommend timers. Yeah. Timers are all of you description. But this is the helps of marketing and SEO and so on. So, so one, of, one of the components of the product index that we include is on a per 
document or per product basis, we give members the ability to indicate specifically that they support a given ISO standard, right? So if, for example, you wish to claim as a software uh, as a publisher that this product supports PDF UA or PDF 2.0, you can go and check the box in the product index uh, in your product listing, provide a URL to the web page on your site that makes this claim, and then you'll get one of these check boxes on the product that, it, that is so listed, right, on the website. Um, I'll be honest, it's not, it's not particularly well used at this point, but that's one of the reasons why I, you know, we, we, we offer a session at the event that helps people understand the sort of bits and pieces that we do in the PDF Association. So some members take advantage of this, others don't, and it's, it, we don't know why. Maybe they don't like it, maybe they think it could be better, and they'll wait. Um, but we pro do provide this utility. And so another utility that I think is, is, is actually more popular than, than, the, uh, than sort of stating your, your support for given PDF standards is a solution agent. We thought of this a few years ago when we, when we thought we wanted to, to provide a new mechanism, a kind of a, a slightly different mechanism for people to do, to find a vendor that meets their specific needs. So the solution agent, and I honestly, I looked around, I didn't find anything else that does exactly what the solution agent does. But the solution agent is very straightforward. It allows you to look for, to look, ask vendors, in fact, the entire PDF industry that has signed up to receive solution agent emails, and that's something that any member can do through the, through the member area. It allows the end user or another member of the PDF association to go to the solution agent, ask for a solution, and then without sharing their contact information. Then members who receive that need, that's what we call it in turn in the system, who receive that need, get to look at it and say, yeah, okay, I'll respond to this stated need and I'll give them a reason to show me their contact information, right? So it's kind of a, it's a, the, the, then when the message from the vendor goes back, oops, sorry, goes back to the person who sent the, in the need, they can decide if it's a good enough answer, they will then share their contact information. I think what, that, what happens in other cases is, that, is it what usually happens, because that's the ideal way it should work. What, what actually use, happens is that people, they get five or six responses from five or six of the vendors in the PDF association who saw the need and thought they had a solution, and then they just visit their websites and, and give them a call, and nobody knows where the lead really came from. Right, so that's fine, that's no problem. All that really matters is that somebody tried to reach out in, a, in some way and they found some answers. But in the ideal use, in the ideal use, if you had a particular need and you're willing to express it in precise terms, and if you put it into the solution agent and it doesn't share your contact information, you could be looking for, you could be looking for whatever, right? And then you, you, you don't have to share any contact information, but you get to evaluate the responses and then make your own decision and proceed from there. So it's essentially a different way to find partners, to hook up with other companies, and of course for end users to try and find solutions that they can pay money for. To be f perfectly honest with you, it's not high. Okay. So there are, it's not high. And I'll, I'll, I ascribe that, it, it's pretty, it, so we are the PDF Association. We're not solving your problem, solvingyourproblems.com, right? So we, we, we describe ourselves as a, sort of a technical outfit. We, the language we use is not, is, even though it uses a term that the end users are looking for, like, PDF or a conversion or something. A lot of users, I think, uh, discover when they come to our website that it's actually not the place for them because it's really more of a, it says on the banner, you know, the meeting place for the PDF industry. Oh, I'm not industry. So, so, uh, so I had hoped when we, when we made this thing that it would provide, that everybody would come to it with a sort of ease that, that I, w I approach it, of course, it's ridiculous. And so, I'm, so for me, it made perfect sense, but it is not proven out. I'm just telling you that. It's a great question, and I'm just giving you the straight answer. It has potential, and I would love to see people try it, like really even push it, like ask good questions, and then say, you know what, you know, and if they tweeted, you know, you know what, I got a, I found a, I found a vendor on this thing and I didn't have to give anybody my email address but it just worked, you know, that, that's what it was designed to do. So, and if you go and just take a feel for it and, and see what you think, it's, uh, it's kind of a, 
it puts it puts the PDF association in the middle, so that it's possible for that question to just go into a place where you, you can't see where the answer comes to you anonymously. And but so far, not massive traffic. So members only resources. Uh, once you click on the on the on the uh, on the solution, uh, excuse me, in the member area in the top right corner that you see there, you get to go to the member area and then that, that icon turns into like yeah, your, the, your own smiling face as represented by your profile picture. And the member area is where you go to update your profile picture and to update your company's profile and also to load the various products that you want to put uh, represented on pdfa.org or also to download ISO documents. Right? And there's a, a lot of different features through that you can access through the member area. Um, and in fact, I even listed them here. So this is where you know, you, the, in, you'd notice a difference between individual and full membership, and that individual members have the ability to join working groups and so on and can access the ISO drafts, but they don't have the ability to, to kind of represent products and, and company information and so on. So just to give you a flavor of some of the things that are literally happening right now, so to speak, in, the, in, these, in these various working groups that we have, well, in the ISO standards, it's sort of, we're continuing, you know, it's, it, it's a process. It just grinds forward. It meets every, twice a year. Uh, and the various ISO, the various stages of ISO documents get worked through, ballots get, ballots get taken, uh, comments get reviewed, and the document uh, moves forward to the next stage. So that's sort of a continuous process. And, and of course, it, it generates documents here and there. And, and for example, PDF UA, we'd expect to publish that next year. Uh, we expect to publish complete uh, a step. Um, uh, um, step is actually is, is, is already authorized and we're waiting for two implementations. So hope to finalize that in, in the fall and so on. So industry working groups, um, uh, as I mentioned, there, there are 18 in total of these TWGs and LWGs. And as you can see from the list here, I'm not going to read it to you. There are a bunch of kind of jobs, right, that these different volunteer-led, uh, volunteer-attended working groups uh, you know, where the various members are finding it useful enough that they're willing to send their employees uh, to, to go participate in these things because it fosters common understanding of the various features and nooks and crannies of the PDF format, uh, which is so important worldwide. So I uh, want to say a point here about vendor, is there a question? No, okay. I want, want to say a point here about kind of how, how do we do this? Like, you know, what's our premise? You know, what's our prime directive, if you will? And, uh, and that would be v vendor neutrality, right? So the way in which we organize is fairly straightforward in the sense that we have, full, we have individual members and full members, those are companies, and we have partner members. And they, the, the differences between them are explicitly laid out in the, uh, in the, in the information that's on the website under the, under the member information or join the PDF association link. I can't remember which. Membership benefits. Membership benefits, thank you. It tells you what the different types of membership are. So what do we do or what do we not do more properly that, that, that is, is sort of the prime directive part where we try not to, where we try not to get, interfere and get in the way and kind of make a mess and, and make things difficult? Well, start off with, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. We, don't, we try not to create software that, that might compete with our members. So it's yeah, probably a good thing for us to do since we depend upon our members, uh, our, our, our membership our revenues in order to operate. And so that would be a bad premise. We don't endorse specific vendors, right? So I, I, I talk to I talk to quite a lot of people in the business, and they they they, they want to know even what I use in my desktop as if it mattered. I'm an end user. Who, who cares? <laughs> uh, I, I say whatever I, whatever it is. But um, so we don't we don't endorse specific vendors. It's not it's not part of what we do at all. We're not here to police the industry. We're here to provide resources to it. Uh, we, we aim to, and that, that brings me to my last point, we aim to lift all boats. Our, our activities are oriented towards improving the PDF ecosystem, improving, um, improving the ability of this PDF technology to service all the vast, diverse range of general purpose documents that the, the general purpose document format requires it to service. So uh, we have, I, I know Tomas is here and I'm here and Matthias is out, has been at the registration desk all day and, and he is absolutely available for any of your sort of more detailed member services questions or in particular your suggestions like, boy, wouldn't it be great if this thing worked better or we'd love to get that sort of input as well. Uh, you've heard from Peter Wyatt, he's the CTO, he gave a keynote uh, yesterday and he's been around this whole conference. He's certainly available to talk to. One of the things that he does, a CTO, 
is he is uh, available to member organizations for a free consultation. And when I say free, I mean, we're not gonna say, oh, and now you should maybe pay us for more of that, because that's not what we do. Um, but we, we, you know, we, we are delighted to consult for, you know, provide perspective uh, to our members. And, and you simply need to get in touch with us and we'll find a time and sit down and, and tell you what we think matters and listen to you and see what we can, see what we can do. All right, so again, you know, back to this, um, you, people ask us for a lot of things. That's fine. That's great. We, we listen and then we try to do anything that we can that lifts all boats, right? If we go, yeah, it doesn't look like it'll lift it, lift a lot of boats except maybe one or two, that's harder. So our contacts there, you have contacts in North America and Europe, and Peter, of course, is based in Sydney, so I'll call that global coverage.